Cleveland veterans report for training camp on July 25th at the Browns training complex. And there's more optimism surrounding a four for their last 48 spanning the last three years organization than any other I've ever known. We'll find out whether that optimism is warranted as we preview training camp for the Cleveland Browns by going one-on-one with John Costco, Cleveland Browns football analyst for Pro Football Focus on the OFN Meeting Room with Greg DePalma. All right, it's Wednesday, June 27th, 2018. I'm Greg DePalma. Thanks for tuning in to the OFN Meeting Room as we preview NFL training camps for the 2018 season. And today, our second of uh, two training camp previews earlier, Indianapolis, that will be available on demand shortly uh, at ourlads.com, as will this interview with Pro Football Focus's John Costco. John, thanks for helping us talk Cleveland Browns football. Hey, my pleasure, Greg. All right, John. So uh, let's get right into it. Let's talk about uh, this. Is, there's so much newness to this organization from the roster, uh, and, and especially the guy that is handling the personnel, uh, and that's John Dorsey. Uh, and, and it really started with Dorsey. So uh, how how are the fans feeling about uh, the job that Dorsey's done at this point? Yeah, I think it's kind of like a mixed bag because. I think you had a, a, a an absolute split between fans of what they liked about Sashi Brown, but then obviously there's, uh, you know, one in 31 kind of speaks for itself, and so you have a, a group of fans that obviously want to change. Um, and so, you know, they're trading away draft capital for players. You know, some people are too tied to the draft capital. You have to eventually use that on players. Um, but I think as a whole, you know, especially with the draft that came – about and drafting players like Baker Mayfield and Denzel Ward, two, I guess, you know, analytics darlings, you could say. Um, You know, I think a lot of the fans are kind of coming around that this team's going to be really competitive this year. Uh, They're going to be better than they have been, obviously, the past couple seasons. And um, I think think he's he's winning over the fans, uh, even the ones that were the Sashi truthers, so... And do you think you know, he's doing a good job? And do you think that the, and, and we'll find out uh, more this season with the coaching staff, especially of course Hugh Jackson. But do you think that that might have been the biggest downfall for Sashi? Would have been uh, possibly the coach uh, because the talent, as we've seen, even though there's a lot more talent this off season, fact is there's just no way the talent uh, on the team last year was a winless team. Yeah, absolutely. We we had them, you know, as a four or five win team talent wise last year. But when you have a quarterback like, you know, a rookie quarterback that's clearly not ready to play and Deshaun Kaiser. True. Um, that that's gonna, you know, rob your team of wins. He he single handedly uh, you know, was, was three wins under replacement, uh, based on our metrics. And that that alone really just kinda kills you. Um, when he you know, making obviously bad decisions, just in, basic inaccuracy, just really efficient inefficient with the ball. So um you know, an improved quarterback situation this year will obviously help dramatically. Um, and essentially, they just, you know, what is, whether it was the coaching or just the, you know, the overall talent on the team, but they weren't able to overcome the uh, the play of, of bad quarterback. Well, what is the word as far as we know it, uh, as far as Hugh Jackson? And, uh, I mean, he's assembled a nice staff. He's got Todd Haley now to go along with Greg Williams. I mean, that's a heck of a combination there for coordinators. And we know Jackson had a had, had – a, uh, outside of his head coaching uh, record, you know, he, he's been uh, somebody that has a good reputation as a coach as well. So, but as a head coach, that's a different story. Does he last the season no matter what? Uh, how do you think this is going to go? And how have the fans uh, been as far as this whole Hugh Jackson thing? Yeah, so, I mean, he's obviously on a hot seat. You know, you don't go 1-31 and, and, and not be on a hot seat. Yeah, he's, I, think, I think in terms of being able to secure his job, you're looking at having to be in playoff contention and probably winning – you know, seven at least seven games this year. Really? Um, they, yeah, I mean, they have the talent to do that. And so they, I agree. If, as long as things goes well, um, you know, they have a few bounces go their way and they're obviously coached well, 
I think he keep he can keep his job, but he has to win a lot of games okay. in order to do that. And then you know, because there's no essentially there are no excuses this year. You know, with the you know based on on the talent that's brought in, a better quarterback situation, bringing in Jarvis Landry, uh, you know, having a solid draft that they did. So um, you know, in terms of with the fans, you know, the fans are same thing with like the Sashi thing. It's essentially the ones that um, uh, you know there's just the excuses for him that like he didn't have the talent to work with, but you know he did. Uh, but the quarterback position really kind of derailed all that. And uh, we'll see, you know, him relinquishing those offensive coordinator duties to Todd Haley and him being able to be just the head coach and kind of oversee everything. That, that might be the, the thing that he needs, you know, he, and in Oakland, he had Al Saunders more of his offensive coordinator. He was still kind of, kind of plays as uh, a little bit of a different situation as that one season he was there. Yep. So perhaps him stepping back, taking the more, uh, you know the head coach role and allowing his coordinators to to deal with offense defense might it might be a better thing for him but he's definitely on the hot seat here he has to win a lot of games and your best guess that if uh, let's just say Jackson were to go uh, do you think the Browns uh, look to start over or is it possible that I mean again they have a couple of veteran coordinators that have been head coaches before do you think they want more stability and say yeah yeah maybe we'll give it to either Haley or Williams. I think that if they move on from Hugh Jackson in the middle of the season or after the season, that um, John Dorsey is going to try to bring in his own guys. Okay. I think that's just kind of like how it, you know, normally a GM it gets to decide, hey, this is going to be my head coach. Sure. You know, I, I, this is going to be, you know, my my reputation's on the roster is on the stake of the coach. So he'd probably pick his own guy, and you'd probably see a new. A clear, a new coordinator. You know, unless he likes Todd Haley as that guy. Yeah. You know, and I don't know, but He's new. I would yeah. assume that you'd see a whole on an entirely rebuilt coaching staff. Yeah, and it all de- and it also depends what's out there. Uh, if there's somebody yeah. uh, that is a viable candidate. Okay, but uh, who knows? Maybe uh, Hugh Jackson gets the job done, and we're not even talking about that. I'm sure the Brown fans would uh, be happy about that. Uh, let's uh, talk about Baker Mayfield, of course, and the quarterback situation. Uh, it's looking more and more. It's sounding more and more. Uh, that Tyrod Taylor, uh, who, uh, look, all indications were uh, months ago that uh, once he was signed and he, he was going to be the starter and the, the draft and he was still going to be the starter. And uh, and uh, now it seems to be that that's the case, that Tyrod Taylor will be the starter. And it, it may, we may not see Baker Mayfield for half a season, uh, depending on the you know wins and losses. Uh, if, if it's a competitive team, uh, maybe Taylor is uh, the, the quarterback all season. That's a possibility, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they when they uh, traded for him, uh, they said that he was the starter. They drafted Baker Mayfield. They said, they said he was the starter, and then throughout all of this, they they basically have not budged from that. Um, it's just you know, the, it's a safe move to have Tyrod Taylor as your as your starter because um, last year he was the second best quarterback in the NFL at protecting the football. He had the, the second um, fewest turnover worthy throws out of 41 quarterbacks, uh, just just behind a guy named Tom Brady. Um, and But the thing is, is that he's not the type of risk taker sure. or he's not going to take the shots downfield like, um, you know, like Tom Brady would. Uh, he, he was 33rd in, in big-time throws from a clean pocket. So uh, you have a really safe player in that, and I, I think Hugh Jackson wants to have that because of what happened last year with <laughs> yeah. you know, Kaiser. So, yeah. Um, Though the thing is, is that like there's obviously a ceiling when it comes to Tyrod Taylor because he's not the type of guy that's gonna to stretch the field, but he's gonna uh, he's gonna you know beat you with his legs and with his efficiency underneath. But um, I think we will just see Tyrod as a starter, especially you know if they you know, win games that they're gonna keep him there. Uh, it's in my opinion, it's really good for a rookie quarterback to sit and learn behind a veteran quarterback and obviously in the past we've seen Browns quarterbacks just have through go through a multitude of injuries. Yep. Hopefully that doesn't happen this year that, you know, the rookie quarterback that you drafted for the future, you know, future of your franchise can learn. And even though he's a guy that I really think that can come in there and excel from day one. Um, I think in the long run, it's still just, uh, you know, potentially just going to be good for him. Yeah. And, and look, I now I'd have to think that if they're not in the playoff race, by the last month of the season, and even if Taylor's going well, that we'll probably see Mayfield for at least a few games. Because if they're not in the yeah. playoff race, we have to see him. 
Yeah, I think so. I think you want to, I mean, even if, regardless if they are or aren't, I mean, obviously it depends on what, what it is like in week 17, like, you know, but you want to see what he is at the end of the season. If, if uh, they're out of the classic picture, maybe six week 16, 17, yeah. obviously 17 is a week where, you know, I think they, they play the Steelers are probably going to be in the playoffs and probably resting their starters. So they'll have a, maybe, you know, a, a, an easier slate of, of defenders to go against. But um, yeah, I, I think uh, it just, you know, obviously depends on how the season shakes out that okay. whether or not we'll see Baker. So Okay. And by the way, Taylor, uh, chances are, uh, unless of course he has a phen- phenomenal season, uh, and even if he does, chances are uh, Drew Stanton becomes the backup next year for Mayfield. Yeah, absolutely. I think it, it, as far as I understand what Tyrod's contract situation is this year is that it's, he's, he's going to become a free agent next year. Yep. And unless he lights it up, that he has something that he hasn't shown in the past that you're not going to see Taylor beyond this year. He's, he's okay. pretty, pretty much playing for his next team this year. Uh, by the way, what about Mayfield as for in the fans? Uh, uh, it, it did seem like it was going to be Darnold. Uh, then all of a sudden, late Mayfield, uh, really late Mayfield. So uh, fans torn w- 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 when that happened. I think I think um, essentially a lot of Browns fans will are trusting Dorsey to okay to have picked the right guy so that's i think good, at the time you kind of saw like a you did see a, a a tear between you know like oh this is was my guy but you know brown fans are brown fans it doesn't matter who you take like they're going to root for for the guy they they obviously you're not going to have brown fans rooting against them by any means sure uh so i think i think they've coming around to him it's just like you know his personality and just the way he carries himself is completely different than what I think they had a uh, the ones that like at least didn't like him pre-draft had a perception of him being like the next Johnny Manziel. He couldn't be further from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's a cocky kid, and he can back it up, and that's good. That's what the organization needs. All right, let's talk about the running back situation. You bring in Hyde, uh, you draft Chubb, Duke Johnson remains, uh, and of course he's one of the most lethal receiving uh, running backs in the league. So uh, how how is this going to go? Does because Chubb I'm hearing has looked real good. So is it possible at some point uh, that Chubb could actually wind up as the starter, or do you guess that it's going to be pretty much equal between the two and then Duke Johnson reprising his role as the third down back? So I think it's going to be a running back by committee. I don't okay. think you can really peg anybody as a starter. I think what you'll see early on is that you know Duke and Hyde are kind of going to split the duty is kind of similar to how uh, Crow and Duke were splitting them, and then as you know, the season kind of progresses, you're gonna they're gonna sprinkle in Chubb more and more, and he's gonna get fed uh, the ball a lot more later in the season. Okay. Um, I think that's how it is because I, I think Chubb is a better player than Hyde. I think Hyde, you know, because he's the, the veteran that is gonna get the the first crack at, at at getting the ball early on in the season, but. I think as you see the season progress, Hyde's going to be featured less, Chubb more so, and then you just have to feed Duke the ball uh, when he gets a chance because uh, in terms of last year, he was their most valuable player uh, by a long shot uh, on offense, and uh, he's a guy that's really deadly with the ball in his hands, whether he's running it or receiving it, but he, you know, he's obviously really great receiving it. He was our number two graded uh, running back as a receiver last year, so um, you have to be able to utilize all of them, and then you never know where injuries are going to come about. So, like, I sure. like the situation they have as a, in, as a running back room. So okay. they, can, they can mix them in the, up and keep them fresh. And a surprise that they didn't try to bring in uh, someone else uh, at fullback? Is that a spot that uh, will uh, warrant reps, uh, enough of it, to go out and, 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 and upgrade the position? Or uh, are they just satisfied with uh, who they have? Yeah, that's a position that you're only going to see uh, from them maybe maximum 10 times per game. So it's not a position of, of need or, or, or much of importance. Um, you have enough tight ends there that you can move them into the backfield. They, they signed Darren Fells that he can, you know, if you need him to be your, your, your uh, fullback, yeah, you can keep your lineup in the backfield to be that. So, the, yeah, the fullback is kind of kind of going out of style in the NFL, so it's not, a, it's not really a, a position that, most teams even uh, keep on, on their roster. Uh, I know that the Patriots are one of the few, and so perhaps the team should kind of model what they're doing. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's just kind of going on by the wayside in the NFL. 
All right. Uh, more depth to tight end. You bring in Darren Fells and uh, David Njoku, of course, though. Uh, he's the big talent there. Uh, and uh, Seth DeValve actually played the most snaps uh, for tight ends last year. So uh, they've got some depth at the position now. Uh, but uh, Njoku is the clear number one guy that the Browns want to see as their number one. Does that happen right away? Yeah, absolutely. He's going to be the guy that, on especially uh, on passing downs, is going to be the number one guy out there. He's he's you know he graded really well as a receiver, and then he improved quite a bit as as a, a blocker. So okay, uh, he's you know early on this season you you saw some plays where he obviously got uh, Kaiser injured in that Detroit game, but really essentially from that point on uh, he started improving his blocking and, and pass protection and as a run blocker. To where he was, he was one of the better run blocking tight ends in the NFL. He was a top ten guy uh, from you know the second half of the season. So I, I think him, his projection in this next season is going to be pretty high. Um, and targeting the tight end is really important in the NFL. It, in our numbers, it shows you know when you target the the tight end position, it has the highest EPA, um, which is ex- expected points added per play of any. Uh, skill position. So the, if you can target your tight end and he can be efficient, it's going to be really good for this team. Uh, Darren Fellows obviously is a blocking tight end, so he's going to be a guy there in two tight end sets. And then Seth DeValve, he's a guy that needs to um, take a step forward this year. He's shown flashes, but he hasn't put it together in a consistent basis. Um, struggles with blocking. Shows sometimes good with his, in receiving, but uh, you know sometimes has you know struggles with his routes and getting in and out of his breaks, even though he's a super athletic guy. Um, you know, running routes is a lot more than just pure athleticism. Sure. All right. Uh, wide receivers. And this is uh, the deepest I've seen it on this team in a while, uh, especially if everybody's healthy, nobody's suspended or anything like that. Uh, but uh, you got Coleman. And, of course, Gordon is, a, is, is just a tremendous player. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. Landry comes in as a free agent. That's huge. Uh, you also add in some draft picks like Callaway and Ratley. Uh, and then they got a couple other guys that are, uh, I believe, underrated. I really think that guys like uh, Lewis and Higgins uh, have, uh, have some talent. And I wouldn't be surprised if, 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 if given the opportunity, if they actually become uh, a little bit more household names. So uh, this looks like a really good deep unit. Uh, again, me, whether Callaway was drafted a little higher or not, well, whatever. Fact is, he's on the team, and we'll see if he could stay out of trouble. But we know how talented he is. Uh, how's it looking so far? Yeah, this is by far, I think, the most improved position in the, in the team because uh, last year, I mean, essentially until J- Josh Gordon got there, they didn't have anybody that you could really rely on. Um, I, I like, you know, I, I like Rashard Higgins coming out of college, but he hasn't been given the opportunity from, you know, having a, having a stable quarterback position, yeah. uh, throwing him the football, neither has any of the, you know, the wide receivers. So I think it's the, the whole room, you know, that they drafted in, you know, the Sashi Brown's first year where they had drafted four, four wide receivers, three of them are still there. I think with a better quarterback situation, these guys could potentially emerge and, and show a little bit more consistency. Uh, Higgins, I think is a really good route runner. Coleman needs to, to really step up and, you know, uh, and when he gets the ball in his hands, he's electric and he can make people miss. But obviously, he just needs to show the the consistency there. And then you got Jarvis Landry, who you know it doesn't matter who was throwing in the ball in, in Miami, he was really uh, really productive there. Um, you know, broke broke 76 t- uh, tackles in his career there, which is one of the highest from the slot position. Um, and then Josh Gordon is if you can keep him on the field, like that yeah. that's a weapon that you know nobody really can cover. So. Um, yeah, it's a it's a unit that obviously on paper looks extremely good. Uh, hasn't together obviously shown anything yet, but with a better you know obviously the stable and better quarterback position yep. situation that they have, uh, I mean this is this could be a top ten unit fast. I agree, and that also will uh, be something for Taylor, something he hasn't seen in Buffalo, so he's got more. No, time. absolutely. Yeah, so, Buffalo is a team that had no. Like wide receiver talent last year, they nope. they had probably the worst. They they had arguably as bad as the Browns were last year, but even even worse. So yeah. uh, he's going to a really good situation for himself this That's year. That's right. And uh, by the way, with Coleman, it's just about staying healthy, right? Yeah, it's yeah. He's got to stay healthy, and then he's got to um, 
he has some concentration drops. Obviously, the the big one last year was in that final game. But like, <laughs> yeah. uh, so if he can stay concentrated and, and stay healthy, I mean, he's a dynamite talent. That I mean, he needs to put it together and everything. But uh, I think being you know no longer having to be relied on to be the number one guy, um, as you know, trying to figure it out. He he's learning from Landry for one, um, and then you know I think he he's going to see a lot more uh, open targets this year. Because oh. of that. Okay. Offensive line and Sean Coleman uh, right now uh, is penciled in to replace Joe Thomas. And Coleman battled cancer uh, just a few years ago uh, at Auburn and even had a knee injury that he had to deal with. So, uh, But uh, he's going to get the shot. And then uh, they drafted Corbett. Uh, early, you bring in Hubbard as a free agent. Uh, this is uh, probably one of the most underrated offensive lines in football, but there is uh, a question at left tackle that needs to be solved. So, uh, what do you, how do you think it's going to shake out uh, as far as the tackle positions? Yeah, you're right in saying that it's an underrated unit because even last year, they and our, our metrics had the number two pass blocking offensive line, you know, opponent, opponent adjusted pass blocking line. So, uh, they faced a hard slate, but they did a pretty good job of keeping the quarterback clean, um, you know, outside of, uh, of Spencer Drango, who's obviously not going to be a, a starter this year. So Sean Coleman's going to come in. He did struggle a little bit as a pass blocker, but he, that was the only piece that did. I think moving him to left tackle, where it's just his natural position in college, and he showed really good play there, uh, I think that will be good for him. And then, uh, you know, uh, Chris Hubbard coming in at a right tackle is going to, you know, solidify that side. And then their their interior is is fantastic as you know both run blocking and pass protection. So um, it's a unit that's going to be strong for them. Um, you know the left tackle is kind of a question mark still. On you know Coleman hasn't really sh- put it all together yet in the NFL, and so there's you know the jury's out on him. Um, so you need to you know make sure that that position there is is solidified because obviously losing Joe Thomas is going to be you know, tough to choose to fill there. And Corbett, is he going to have a legitimate chance to start? I think so. You know, he played all, you know, past three years at Nevada as, as the left tackle. Um, and so there, you know, he's projected to be a guard or a center going to the NFL. But, you know, he could potentially be the left tackle. But, you know, if they're uncertain about that position, like they don't think Coleman or Corbett could, can lock down the left tackle position, what I really think that they should do is actually move Joel Batonio out to left tackle. He played at Nevada as a left tackle there. Hmm. He was our number two uh, pass protection uh, guard in the NFL last year. You put him out there at left left tackle, which is you know not not going to change you know how you get to use your footwork. It's going to have obviously going to change some technique there, but uh, put him there, get that position at least up to an average level. I don't know if yeah. Batonio can be an elite pass blocking left tackle in the NFL. Uh, but I'm pretty sure he can be a, at least an average one. And then if you have uh, Corbett at left guard, that might be an easier transition for him um, going to the NFL. I think that that would probably have a, sol- a, a really solid offensive line still. So um, I think they have options there with Corbett because of his, uh, you know, his body type and his position versatility that he had played you know, some guard in college as well. All right, now let's uh, go on defense and uh, take a look. Uh, first of all, up front, uh, of course, Miles Garrett, uh, Ogba's there, and uh, then there's uh, some some nice depth as well. You got uh, Nassib. They uh, brought in uh, Smith, the free agent, uh, drafted Thomas, uh, and then uh, at defensive tackle, uh, you've got some very underrated players there. I- I'm not, and, and and you could you could tell how how. How, how talented that these guys, these kids are uh, when Cleveland decided to trade Danny Shelton. So, uh, so, so th- again, this is a better defensive line than people think, especially in the middle, uh, which was uh, one of the reasons that they felt that they could go ahead and draft Ward as their fourth pick instead of Chubb. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about Ward and the, that decision to take him over Chubb when we get to the secondary, but... I think that you're right. This is a defensive line that's pretty solid. Uh, obviously, with at the at the edge, you've got a a, a future all star, you know, all all, all pro and Miles Garrett's going to be there. Um, you know, an off season with him healthy, and then a full season with him healthy, he's going to be you know a double digit sack, uh, you know, guy, and he's going to be having the most pressures in the league, uh, you know, up in that that conversation, like with 
with Von Miller and Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa. So uh, you obviously got a, an elite guy right there. Um, and then Emmanuel Agba, one of the better run defenders at the edge position, uh, needs to, uh, you know, uh, he needs to get better as a pass rusher. But I think I think he can do that. And then you're going to have the depth, obviously, with adding, you know, Chad Thomas. Uh, that you know, he's a guy that graded well for us in, in college this past year. Uh, and then you have obviously Carl, Carl Nassib and um, at the edge position. So that, that's a good group right there. Defensive yep. line. I love Larry Ogunjobi. I'm oh, yeah. really excited to see what he can do with a, a, a starters rep because, you know, in the one game that he got to start last year, he graded as the best player on the defensive line <laughs> in that game. Um, and then, you know, then Trevon Coley came back and was the starter uh, and he got his, his reps knocked down in half. So and he's still graded, you know, as a, as a top 20 uh, defensive tackle in the NFL last year, despite only playing 300 snaps. So hitting him in a full-time position, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see what he can do there. Uh, and then you got guys got, got like Caleb Brantley, who was really excellent in, at the end of the season last year. Uh, he just needs to be able to focus and, and really, you know, put in a good off-season of work to, uh, you know, to become more consistent there. Um, and then, you know, I think even so, like even with Chad Thomas and Manu Agua, those guys you can rotate into the interior. So uh, I think you have some movable pieces there. And, uh, and a unit that can be really strong for them this year. Did, did, did it help that when Brantley uh, came to the Browns uh, the year before, uh, there were some questions about uh, him off the field, and and he went to the same school as Callaway. So did it help, do you think, or is that just a coincidence that they drafted two guys with character issues uh, that you just don't see happen very often that just happen to go to the same school? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a coincidence. For one, I mean, Sashi drafted – Caleb Brantley, and then he had Dorsey draft uh, Callaway this year. Uh, Callaway is a guy that I think his his off the field issues are much more severe than what Brantley's were, and I think Brantley's were just like it was a, it was suspect that he was in a in an altercation once, and it was like thrown out, like the case was thrown out, and he wasn't charged. So, Got it. Um, and that was just like a one time thing with with Callaway. I mean, he was suspended for an entire year. Sure. So there's a big you know big question mark there with his but yeah i think it was just a coincidence that they were both from the same school all right and uh, by the way is trenton thompson maybe one of the top rookie free agents on the team yeah uh, he's a guy that graded really well for us as a run defender all all three seasons that we have on him um you know he's not much of a pass rusher but he's going to be a guy that i think can can plug in there at the nose tackle position and um uh, and, and be a productive uh, role player in, in his first year. All right, let's go to the line. He makes the team, obviously. Sure, I mean, it's going to be hard with that unit, but, uh, hey, practice squad is not a bad idea as well. Uh, let's talk yeah. about the linebacker position because this is also a position that has gotten better. Schobert took off as a, as a middle linebacker last year. Uh, you get Collins back. You got Kirksey. Uh, and then uh, you add in Kendrick's free agency, Avery in the draft, and you also have Orchard and Burgess. So this is a good unit. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, adding adding Kendricks just only adds depth to it, and, it, and they have they have the ability to uh, mix and match those guys. They don't have to be out there every single snap like uh, like Kirksey and Schobert were last year. So you know, if you want them to be better on a, on a per snap basis, maybe give them some give them some more rest. Schobert really did uh, improve as the second half of the season came along. Uh, he struggled in the first half. He was great immediately, and then. As the second half came around, he was, you know, one of the top graded coverage guys and one of the top uh, graded run defenders. So I, I like what we can, you know, what to see from Joe Schobert this year. I think he's going to be uh, even better. You know, he, he made the Pro Bowl last year. Obviously, he was an alternate and got in that way. But um, and then a healthy Jamie Collins will only help the unit as well because we know how good he was in, in New England when he was healthy. And I think if they can utilize him in a better way. Um, Putting him in, in a gap blitzes, uh, stunting him from you know from the outside into the a gap or the b gap would be a better better use of his skills than uh, trying to get him to man up on on tight ends because that's not his strength. So I think having the you know uh, Kendricks to come in there um, will help him as well as as the rest of the crew. So um, really deep guys. I, I like Avery out of college. This is a guy that was extremely efficient rushing the passer. I think he's going to be more utilized as a 
um, pass rush specialist for for the Browns and probably not get be in coverage as much, but uh, he's a guy that can really get after the quarterback for them. All right, let's uh, finish this off with the uh, defensive backfield and uh, no position on the team at more transition besides quarterback than the secondary. Uh, and it starts with Ward. And the more you hear Greg Williams talk about how important it was to bring Ward into this defense, uh, especially when you take a look at what they've got depth-wise up front, uh, when we talked about uh, Chubb, uh, the more it makes sense. And, uh, and, and, and you got to also throw in the free agents and gains and carry the trade for Randall. And uh, you also brought in Mitchell and you drafted Thomas. So, uh, and then you got three uh, holdovers, Calhoun, Kindred, and Peppers, who have talent. So uh, it's, 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 there's a lot of newness here, but uh, i, I got to believe the team is very optimistic starting with Ward. Yeah, I think you're, you're looking at um, John Dorsey shaping a, a secondary more in what like, uh, Greg Williams likes to see. Um, Denzel Ward is, was, I, I thought, a fantastic pick, um, you know, especially over, over Bradley Chubb. You know, Bradley Chubb might become a great, great player. Uh, in our eyes, we didn't see him as an elite pass rusher. He was a, he was a good overall player. Um, and then we, we saw Denzel Ward as an elite coverage guy. So, um, and then especially in our numbers show that uh, coverage is more important than the pass rush. You know, when you have a, um, a top pass rush unit and a bottom coverage unit, it, you see uh, two fewer wins than when you have a, a top coverage unit versus a, a bottom uh, pass rush unit. So, okay. Um, the better the better your coverage unit is, you know, it's a better predictor of, of wins and, and it shows and it shows that year in year out. So if you can solidify your secondary and get that that good, it makes the rest of your team look better. It makes you know gives your uh, defensive line and edge rushers get to the quarterback more often. I think you know, you know one of the quotes that Greg Williams and John Dorsey said that they had you know twenty nine or thirty plays that they saw last year that Miles Garrett was within a step of the quarterback. But the ball is out so quickly that they he wasn't getting the the, the sack. So um, you know, putting in a, a shutdown corner like Denzel Ward, adding in guys like um, obviously putting in uh, Demarius Randall at, at safety, bring, which allows Peppers to come into the box. Uh, Gaines and and Carey, both those guys can can lock down on their cornerback positions. Good and press coverage uh, will allow the the quarterback just to hold it for a split second longer, which yeah. will. Uh, obviously, if you result into more sacks, and sure. Stuff. So, um, it's it's a the whole unit is definitely going to be improved. Um, they did lose, I think. I think losing McCordy and, and Kayla, those are pretty solid players. That, you know, I'd like to see them to keep onto those guys, just because like I don't really think you can have too much depth in the secondary because of how important that coverage is. Because if you obviously if, let's what happens if Denzel Ward or somebody just gets injured, You're right? Uh, or just another injury, like you had. In, and, and obviously Howard Wilson, who was a guy that was going to be expected to contribute this year, injured again, that just kind of weakens that whole group. So I think, um, you know, you want them to stay healthy, and if they do, it's, it's a unit that's going to be really improved. Yeah, especially with the amount of cap space the Browns still have. So uh, I, I could understand that. Is there a player out there uh, with the cap space that you have in general uh, and, and I still want to wrap up the, the DBs, but before I, I do that, that you know, as far as the team in general, is there a possibility of, of the Browns making a move at some point? And if so, uh, what would be the most likely position? I, I haven't looked to see in, in, a, in a while to see who's still left out there, but usually by this time, you're not looking to add much for impact. I know like uh, Eric Reed, uh, safety that was with the 49ers, is still, is still out there. So, um, and he's been a productive player in, in his career in with the 49ers, but I know the the reason why he's not getting signed is, you know, off-field stuff that really shouldn't be off-field issues. But, um, that you know, that's a guy that, <laughs> for one, he's in the secondary, a position of, of, of importance for any team. Uh, so, I, you know, if they brought him in, you know, that would be, uh, I think, a good move because it just upgrades the unit and just brings in more competition and, you know, because oh, yeah, obviously sure. you have a yeah, you have you have a, a competition between Peppers and Kindred at the strong safety position. Um, you know, I, I think for the the more there, the more experience you get there, the better. How how do you think they're going to use Peppers this year compared to last year? Well, 
also last year he was he was lining up in Akron, Ohio, uh, as opposed to you know close to the line of scrimmage. So I think he's going to be <laughs> a guy that they're going to put in the box, okay, uh, and and utilize against you know uh, in, in underneath zones and and match, matching up against tight ends and and running backs out of the backfield. Something that he's going to be able to make more plays. You know, he's a guy that last year um, he really struggled in that deep free safety role. Um, up until you know maybe the last five or six games a year, um, and he really kind of turned it on. Was uh, seeing better angles, taking better angles to the football, uh, reading the field in front of him better, and it showed in his grade. In the first first tw- uh, ten or twelve games of the year, he was you know the second worst safety in our grades. Uh, the last five six games of the season, he was um, the twenty seventh okay. out of eighty. So okay. you know that's a. It's an improvement, and that's sure. what you want to see from your rookies, and yep. uh, he did show that. So um, I'm excited to see what, what progress he, he continues to show, and especially a more natural position for him. All right, speaking of rookies that made progress, uh, Zane Gonzalez started two for five, ended 13 for his last 15. So uh, is there hope that he is going to be able to hold on to that job long term? And uh, if that happens, uh, then it's a nice kicking combo with uh, with Britton Colquitt, but... Uh, uh, do, do you is that is that a is that is that still kind of uh, a, a, an entire unit uh, that needs to get a lot better, a little bit better? Uh, do they know for sure who's going to be returning kicks? Yeah, so Zane Gonzalez, I think is going to be fine. Um, he's a guy that in college was you know he made seven of ten field goals over fifty yards. Um, you know, so he has the leg on him and he has the accuracy. Um, and I think I think. You know, going to the NFL, having an adjustment there. Obviously, you saw in the second uh, second half of the season, he really improved. Um, you know, he made two of three over 50 yards and four out of six over 40 yards, or, you know, 40 to 49 yards. So yep. he's a guy that, um, you know, give him, give him more time. He's a seventh, he was a seventh-round pick. He came out as a, you know, this you know, with a booming leg, which you saw in, uh, in with, with his kickoffs and stuff like that. So I think – you know he's fine there. Britton Colquitt is a is a you know very good punter for the Browns. You're right; it's a whole unit as a whole that needs to get better at, at uh, um, you know covering kicks, covering punts, uh, blocking on re- on returns. Yeah. I think in terms of having a returner, you know I think Peppers is a is a good punt returner. You can even put Antonio Callaway back there; he'd oh, be a yeah. good returner as well. Yep. So um, the the kick returner isn't all that important anymore in the game based on how the, the rules have been changing uh, because it, for one having a, a kneel down takes you out to the 25 where the average return uh, out of the end zone takes you to you know the, the 21 22 yard line so you, you, essentially you should be kneeling in every time that it gets kicked into the end zone yeah um, so that unit isn't is becoming less important in the NFL but uh, they definitely need to get better as, as a coverage unit uh, on a whole, and you know they've made a change with uh, special teams coordinators, so we'll see if that is uh, that makes a, a difference for them. All right, John. Uh, before I let you go, uh, any injuries that we need to keep an eye on? Anybody that's going to go into camp, uh, in, you know, in some sort of uh, medical condition? Uh, they're the only one that's obviously that's been decided that he's out for the season is, is Howard Wilson needing another knee surgery. Okay. Uh, but really they're coming in right now pretty healthy. I know Britton Coldkit was had a had an injury and they had to, you know, sign a, a punter for at least a practice squad. So we'll that's the one to keep an eye on to see if Britton Coldkit can uh can come back from that. I'm pretty sure he he will be able to, but really they're they're going into the training camp uh in a pretty relatively healthy all right uh and if you had to pick one or two i mean we talked about trenton thompson if you had to pick uh, a free agent rookie free agent to keep an eye on besides trenton thompson oh desmond harrison the um uh offensive tackle from west georgia um you know it, so what we do in college for co- our college grading is all fbs games and then if any fcs team is playing a an FBS game. So we don't actually have any, any grades on this guy, but you look at his tape, you look at his athleticism, his movement skills, uh, just from an evaluation standpoint, he's a guy that if he can keep, get his mind right and, and, you know, stay off the, you know, he has all these, these off the field issues. If he can okay. get that cleaned up, he's okay. a guy that can be, um, you know, he, <laughs> compete for that left tackle position. 
uh, and, and might be uh, a good player for them in years to come. Okay, good one, Desmond Harrison. And uh, and, and give me a sleeper then, somebody that is a, a pro, uh, not a rookie, uh, that uh, could surprise, uh, we need to keep an eye on. A sleeper that could surprise this year, I would have to go with, uh, I, mean, I don't know how much of a sleeper he really is, cause, uh, but Brian Body Calhoun, Okay. I know that people know that he's a good player, but I don't think they know how how actually good he is. Okay. Like he had, he put up some some otherworldly statistics last year where he he allowed uh, you know under under five point five yards per cover snap, which is which was the second best in the NFL. Uh, he allowed uh, you know one catch every twenty one cover snaps, which was you know a top ten time, uh, mark in the end of PFF era of all time. So this is a guy that, you know, when he gets targeted, he doesn't give up many yards and he doesn't give up many catches at all um, because, you know, he's just he's that talented and okay. created extremely well. So I think this is a guy that um, people are kind of sleeping on because they added so much talent to that, sure. that secondary. Yeah. And I think this is a guy that really has that opportunity to uh, make a name for himself and a household name, not just for Browns fans, but – you yeah. know, fans across the NFL. Sure. Uh, one year is, is one year, but if you can do it for more than one year, then uh, that's legitimate. All right. Uh, excellent. Great job, John. Appreciate it. Your Twitter handle is John Costco 3 correct? That is correct. Great. Appreciate it, John. And uh, best of luck this season, our pro football focus, and with your Browns. And we look forward to talking to you again at least, uh, you know, a couple more times, and uh, especially if they start winning some football games. Yeah, that's that's the the goal, right? To win to win football games. We'll see if they can. Uh, I, I have a feeling they're going to win more than they did last year in the, in the past few years. So combined, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's been it's this has been this has been fun. I, I appreciate the, the the time. It's uh, always good to talk football and especially Browns football. Yeah, and uh, hopefully we'll do more of it. Thanks, John. Absolutely. Thank you. Take care. That's John Costco, Pro Football Focus, and uh, yeah, look. Uh, I know there are Jet fans out there, me being a Jet fan. Uh, they're, uh, oh, you know, it's been, whatever, seven years since the playoffs and uh, how miserable it is. And uh, there are teams out there that have been more miserable, more a fan base, more miserable than the Jets. They're, they're out there, and the Browns are one of them. No playoffs since 2002. Only 500 or better once since 2002. No playoff win since Bill Belichick coached the team in 1994. So you see, it could be worse. All right, so that's uh, it for the Cleveland Browns training camp preview. We'll be back tomorrow talking Miami Dolphins. Uh, Don't forget to order a subscription of your choosing, including the 2018 R-Lads NFL Draft Review Guide right here at rlads.com. You can follow us on Twitter at PrimeSN and receive our on-demand media alerts for every OFN show and interview, including this one. Thanks for listening to this edition of the Our Lads Football Network Meeting Room with Greg DePama on the Our Lads Football Radio Network, where it's never too early to think about the start of the 2018 season. <laughs>